More often than not, when I hear people talking about drawing in Adobe Illustrator, there's this reference to a rectangle tool or a line tool or an ellipse tool or something like that. And while those may be drawing tools in Illustrator vernacular, when I think of drawing, I think of brushes. Now, of course, Illustrator has a brush tool. In fact, it actually has two of them. But right out of the box, they may not behave the way that you think they should. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the basics of drawing in Illustrator using your Wacom pen tablet. In most instances, drawing in Illustrator involves creating vector paths and then applying various brushes to those paths based on a desired appearance. You first create the path using any number of tools, such as the aforementioned rectangle tool or line tool, etc. When you use the paintbrush tool, however, you simultaneously apply a brush stroke as you draw. This method offers a more familiar drawing experience. To draw with the paintbrush tool, first select the tool from the toolbox, and then choose a brush from the brush panel. Now, if you're familiar with brushes in Photoshop, this panel is going to look a little sparse. But don't worry, the default color graphic brush is the most common brush type for drawing. There are actually five brush types in all, including scatter, art, bristle, and pattern, but those are a little bit beyond the scope of our lesson today. Next, simply press your pen to the tablet and draw a stroke across your document. The results are going to look a little boring, kind of like that illustration we drew just a moment ago. That's because there's no variation to your brush stroke, meaning the stroke maintains the same width from the beginning to the end. Using your pressure sensitive pen, however, you can vary the width of the brush stroke based on how hard you physically press your pen to the tablet. To vary the width of a brush stroke, double tap on the first color graphic brush in the brush panel. Doing so will reveal the color graphic brush options for that particular brush. Now, change the size parameter from the default fixed position to pressure from the drop down menu. Next, increase the variation slider to 5. In doing this, you set a smaller brush size based on the lightest touch of your pen to the tablet and a larger brush size based on a heavier touch. Now, drawing with the paintbrush tool and your Wacom pen should yield a more true to form brush stroke. Pressing the pen lightly to the tablet produces a thin stroke, while pressing a little bit harder produces a wider stroke. Another consideration is the behavior of the paintbrush tool itself. You can modify the tool options by double tapping on the paintbrush tool in the toolbox. In the paintbrush tool options dialog box, you can alter the fidelity and options. Fidelity controls the distance that you have to move your pen to add new anchor points to a path. This is determined based on a slider ranging from accurate to the left and smooth to the right. Accurate will yield more anchor points while smooth delivers less. This setting is entirely based on your style of drawing, and for that, I suggest that you experiment. Under Options, I recommend unchecking Fill New Brush Strokes and Keep Selected. Doing this will make your brush work a little bit more familiar. The Fill New Brush Strokes option applies a fill to the path as you draw. The Keep Selected option keeps the path selected when you've completed the stroke. After you make these adjustments, tap OK and give the paintbrush tool another try. Return to these paintbrush options and modify them so that you can see how the behaviors differ with these settings on and off. The Blob Brush tool is an exception to the standard method of creating paths. This tool creates outlined and filled shapes as you draw. In this way, the Blob Brush actually behaves more so like a brush than the Paintbrush tool, at least in a traditional sense. To draw with the Blob Brush tool, first select it from the toolbox. It can be found nested beneath the Paintbrush tool. Now, choose a brush from the brush panel. Next, simply press your pen to the tablet and draw a stroke across your document. As was the case with the paintbrush tool, without enabling pressure, your stroke is going to look pretty boring. Similar to the paintbrush, the blob brush tool can offer unique behaviors by adjusting its options. You can modify the tool options by double tapping on the blob brush tool in the toolbox. In the blob brush tool options dialog box, you can adjust the following options. Keep Selected specifies that when you draw over a merged path, mind you with the same color, all paths are selected and then remain selected as you continue to draw. Merge Only with Selection specifies that new strokes merge only with an existing selected path. From a learning or just getting started perspective, I recommend leaving these two options unchecked. Similar to the Paintbrush tool, you can alter the Fidelity option in the same way. These next set of options should be familiar to you as they work the same as the color graphic brush within the brush panel, except this time the adjustments apply to the tool itself. You can adjust the size, angle, and roundness of the blob brush's effects through a variety of parameters. In the drop down menu next to size, change the setting from default fixed to pressure. 
Next, increase the variation slider to equal the size of the brush. In doing this, you set a smaller brush size based on the lightest touch of your pen to the tablet and a larger brush size based on a heavier touch. Now, drawing with the blob brush tool and your Wacom pen should yield a more true to form brush stroke. Pressing the pen lightly to the tablet produces a thin stroke, while pressing a little bit harder is going to make a wider stroke. A unique feature of the blob brush tool is the ability to increase or decrease the size of the brush using either the left or right bracket keys or the touch ring on your tablet should you have one. The variation setting that you adjusted in the tool options adjust corresponding to the size of the brush. Again, this makes the tool behave more like a traditional brush. Last but not least, we have the eraser tool. Now this tool does not have brush in its title, but it does behave like a brush. In fact, it acts just like the blob brush. You can adjust the angle, roundness, and size of the eraser using pressure or any number of other controls. So if you have ambitions of actually drawing an illustrator, give these settings that I recommended a try. You're going to appreciate the ability to turn your sketches into scalable vector drawings with your Wacom pen tablet.